Well, it's good, like I said, to be in God's house this morning. We do want to thank God for each and every one of you that's made it our way this morning. You know, it's a, of course, it's a, it's a big day. Everybody, a lot of celebration going on last night, this morning, I'm sure. A lot of people probably paid for the celebration last night. There's a lot of things that goes on on New Year's. I started trying to think about this message and uh, think about thinking about New Year's and what all we do on New Year's. You know, I, as I thought about it, I started thinking about all the resolutions that we make for that New Year. I don't know how many of you in here make New Year's resolutions, but I know a lot of people have. A lot of people make New Year's resolutions, and boy, if we could just follow through with those resolutions, we'd be in good shape, wouldn't we? I'd be better looking and skinnier and have hair and uh, all kinds of things. Be better people. We'd be all kinds of different things. What if we could just follow through? The problem with New Year's resolutions is a lot of times we can't follow through with the resolutions that we want to make. We see the need, we see the want, we have the want to change. But sometimes we just can't follow through with that. So I started thinking about that and I started reading and I, I went to Lamentations. And uh, in the third chapter, starting in the 21st verse, if you would have stand with me for the reading of God's Word, we're going to read a few verses here. I see if I can see it up here. Starting in the 21st verse, it says, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Praise God. You may be saved. Now, as I thought about all those resolutions, I thought about how that we get so tied up in that. The first of the year, we want to see so many things changed in our life. And I started thinking that where true change comes from. I started thinking just about what we really needed in our lives instead of what we think we need. I, I know in my life there's a lot of things sometimes I think I need, but I really don't need them. There's a lot of things that I'd like to see happen in my life, but it really don't have to happen. The thing that has to happen in my life, the thing that I need the most in my life, is my relationship with God. My relationship with Christ, that's what I need more than anything else in my life. And sometimes throughout the course of the year, I forget that. Even as a preacher, as a pastor, I forget that. It might not be for a month. It might not be for six months. It may just be for a day. It may be for a few minutes. But sometimes I think I'm no different than the ones that sat in here listening to me this morning. I think that sometimes throughout the year, I forget just how important it is for me to have a relationship, a working, loving, respectful relationship with my God. And God loves you. He loves each and every one of us. If you know him as your Savior in here, you're so blessed this morning. And I say this often, but it's true. Every time I reflect back and I see what I come from, I'm so thankful that God picked me up, that he made me who I am. I'm nobody, praise God, to you. I'm nobody to a lot of people, but I'm somebody to God this morning. I'm somebody in God's eyes this morning. You're somebody in God's eyes this morning. And I'm thankful for that this morning. I'm thankful that God loves us enough that he reaches down and he takes care of us day by day by day. He watches over us. And that's why I come to this verse and this is what it meant to me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. I have a hope, praise God, because I know this man called Jesus as my Savior. I have a hope for this new year, not because it's a chance for me to start over and do my life the way I want it to be this new year, but I have a hope, praise God, because this new year allows me an opportunity to do my life better for God. That's what we should want out of the new year, because that's where your blessings come from this morning. That's where your hope comes from this morning. 
It don't come, praise God, from that new book that you're getting ready to read. Your hope don't come from that new job that you're getting ready to start. Your hope don't come, praise God, from all the things that this world should say makes you have hope. Your hope comes from God this morning. The only hope you have comes from God. The only prayer that you got comes from God. And oh, what a hope it is. What a prayerful hope that it is, our Lord and Savior. Oh my gosh, this morning, if you know Him as your Savior this morning, you've got a great hope going into this year, 2017. A great hope. Now we don't know what this year will bring. This past year, we lost so many good people in our church. So many people that our church is reeling from. Pillars in our church. We've lost so many good people. But in that respect, heaven has gained so many great souls. Heaven has gained so many great saints. And that's what those people have worked all their lives for. Now, 2017, I don't know what we'll see. I don't know what we'll endure. I don't know what we'll go through. I don't know. But I know one thing. I know that if there's any hope in 2017, in my life, and hopefully in your life, it's going to start with Jesus Christ. It's going to start with that foundation. Because that foundation is a true foundation. There's nothing else that you can build up on in this world that's solid and steady and true. Jesus Christ is always true. He's always solid. We can put our hope in too many things. We put our hopes in too many areas. We should concentrate upon the Lord. It says, This I recall in my mind, therefore have I hope. In verse 22 it says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fell not. We serve a mighty, holy God. We serve a God that can make all things possible. We serve a God that has compassion on me and you. I know he does. If not, there's none of us would be sitting here this morning. He has compassion upon us. He has mercies upon us. And I thank God for that. It was that way in 2016, if you knew him. It was that way in 2015, 14, and all down the line. As long as you've ever known him, he's had mercies upon you. I thank God that I serve a God that's merciful, that has compassion, that fell with God. Because I got news for you. Every kind of passion that we have, it will fail. If you have a passion in this new year to lose weight, somewhere down the line, you'll fail that. You may lose weight, somewhere down the line, you do something else. You'll start eating again, you'll start doing something. If you have a passion to do anything that you can almost put your hand on, somewhere you'll fail. Not because you're a bad person, because you're a human. Because you're human. But God, but God never fails. God never fails. He fell not, the Bible said. God, His mercy and His compassion goes on forever. They are new, in verse number 23, it says, They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I want you to know something. Every morning you get up, every day you climb out of bed. I always tell everybody, they'll say, well, how are you, how's your day today? I said, it was a good day today. I got up this morning. That started a good day for me. I don't know what I'll face by the end of the day, but that started a good day. God let me get up. <coughs> God blessed me this morning to get up, and he blessed each and every one of you. There are so many people that would like to be in this church service this morning that's not here. That couldn't be here because of sickness, because of something else that they couldn't help. But God has mercy and he has faithfulness to his children. It says in verse number 24, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Now you can put hope in whatever you want in this world. You can hope in stock markets, there's people that does every day. You can hope in retirements. You can hope in your bank account. You can hope in your spouse. You can hope in whatever you want to hope in. But the fact of the matter is, all those hopes, praise God, can let you down. But there's one hope that you can hope in that will never let 
let you down. His name is Jesus Christ. He's never once failed you. He never will fail you, praise God. As many times as you fail him, he'll never fail you. He'll never fail to pick you up when you fall or when you stumble. He'll never fail to hear you when you call on him and no one else is around. My God never fails you, nor will he ever. The things of this world, our hopes in this world, they come and they go. Ain't it funny? Today we, we want this. We think that's the most important thing in the world. A week from now we'll want this. And we think that's the most important thing in the world. In fact, well, that sounds like teenagers. I don't know if we ever grow out of the teenagers. I don't know if we ever do. We get a little bit more solid, a little bit more steady, but we still have that. We still have that wants and those hopes sometimes. And they change so rapidly. There's no wonder we have a hard time keeping up. There's no wonder we have a hard time finding ourselves sure. There's only one thing this morning that I'm sure. I'm not sure that I'll have a home when I go home. When I leave from here, I'm not sure my house will still be standing when I get back. You know, there was people in Gatlinburg not too long ago that went through that very thing. They left, but when they come back, the houses was gone. Their families that they left was gone. I'm not sure this morning that I'll make it back out to my truck sitting on the end of this, at the end of this church. I'm not sure if I did that my truck would still be sitting there. But I'm sure of one thing this morning. I'm sure of who I serve this morning. I'm sure that Jesus Christ will keep me. I'm sure, praise God, of his mercies and of his love and his compassion. That's what I'm sure of in this new year. Amen. Out of all the things in this new year, I'm not sure of. I don't know that I'll be working at DMC come the end of this year. I don't know if I'll be working there next week. I have no clue. I have no clue about what's going to happen to me in my life this year. I don't know. I may go to the doctor next week and you say, well, this is kind of a, a downing uh, message this morning. No, no, it's not. I'm just telling you that we need to open our eyes. We don't know what's around the corner. But we know who holds us. If you have Jesus as your Savior, you know all you need to know this morning about whatever life's going to throw your way. You know no matter what, that our hope in Him is a hope that's not wasted. That our, our, our wants in Him is wants that's not wasted. That our love for Him is love that's not wasted. Because He reciprocates back to us. And he says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Who else would you hope in this morning? Where else are you going to get hope in? Are we going to hope in our president? Past, future, whatever. Are you going to hope in him? Don't hope too much. He's man. Don't hope too much in your pastor. He's man. Don't hope too much in your deacons. They're men. Hope in Jesus Christ. If you have something this year you want to hope in, if you have something this year that you want to stress and make better in your life, make your walk with Christ better in 2017. If you want something that's going to steady you, something that's going to make your life more sure, then you get closer to the one, praise God, where all blessings come from. You get closer to the one that can control what's going to happen to you tomorrow. You get closer to the one, praise God, that's going to hold you till you get home one sweet day. You want to get closer to something this year. You want to do something better this year. Get closer to Christ. The Bible says, the Lord, in verse number 25, it says, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Once you look at that last part. To the soul that seeketh him. See, a lot of times we get saved. When you hear it around here, we, we get saved and we get satisfied. You hear people say that all the time. But the fact of the matter is, once you get saved, that's the blessing part of it. That's the great part. Then you've got to seek at the Lord. You've got to seek at his ways, his paths. If you don't, you will lose your way. If you don't seek of God, you will lose your way. 2017 will be worse than 2016 if 2016 was bad for you. Unless you seek Jesus in his way, unless you put him first, 
You're not going to ever have the richness that your life can have. You're never going to understand the blessings that God can give you. James, the book of James, chapter 4, verse 8. And I never gave these to her, but I'll read it to you. James, chapter 4, verse 8 says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. It says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. <coughs> you go, man. <coughs> Think about it this morning. <coughs> if you want God to get closer to you, then you draw closer to him. If you want God to bless you more, if you want God to wake you up and to give you what you need in this coming year, then you draw close to Him. You do what it takes to get closer to Him. We go to church, we read our Bibles, we pray, we do whatever it takes to make a better relationship with Christ. And once you make a better relationship with Christ, then He will bless you richly. The Bible says in Matthew, <coughs> chapter 6, Verse 33 and 34. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, the things that we want in this life, the things that we have need of in this life, how do we get them? Do we go out and we make our way? No. We seek God first. We seek God first in our life. And God will add all that to you. He knows what your need is. He knows when you're sick. He knows when you're healthy. He knows when you need money and when you don't. He knows when you're going to be able to make your car payments and when you can't. God knows. Now, does it hurt to pray for those things? No, absolutely not. Pray, absolutely. But seek God first. If you seek Him first and His righteousness, then these things shall be added unto you. If you want somebody to lead you in 2017, if you want to make it a better year for you and your family, then you get close to Christ. You say, well, I have a hard time doing that. My family don't want to go that way. It's hard. I hear Brother Jason say, it's a blessing that you have a spouse that's saved and is a Christian. It's a blessing. He's right. It's a gift. It is a blessing. But sometimes you don't have that. Sometimes you have one that wants to, the one that don't. Sometimes you get into that. Sometimes it's just you. You get into that sometimes. I have enough trouble keeping me in line. Much less want to keep anybody else in line. But the thing about it is, if you don't seek God with everything that's about you, how in the world do you expect Him to bless you? People preach on it all the time. I've heard it called spare tire religion. We keep God in the back till we need him. And then we want to drag him out. And we want to say we got him. Our country does the same thing. Our country wants to disorder him on every end. On every end, we're going to get him out of everything we got until we need him. And then when we need him, we're going to have prayer vigils. We want to drag him out and say, we have God on our side. God bless the USA. Well, God bless, will bless the USA if the USA blesses him first. God will bless you if you put Him first in your life. If you make Him the priority instead of everything around us the priority. Make God the priority this year. So if you want to change something to make you better this year, in 2017, if you want to love people than you ever have, if you want to feel better than you've ever felt, if you want to get places that you never thought you could get, then you seek God first. And let God add them to you. I never once thought I'd be a pastor. Never. Even when I became a preacher, I never once thought I'd be a pastor. And I often told people, I don't want to be a pastor. I have nothing to do with it. And I can tell you this morning that being a pastor is the best thing that ever happened to me short of being saved. Being a pastor has been a blessing to me. Now, I may not be your best pastor in this whole wide world. In 88 years from now, they may not remember my name. And that's okay. It's okay. But being a pastor has been a blessing for me. And I didn't know that I wanted it. I didn't know that I needed it. God did, though. 
God had a plan. You know how you get to God's plan? You seek God first. You seek God first. You put Him in front of you. And you seek whatever His will is for your life. Don't worry about the extra pounds. Ms. Nagatha asked me not too long ago. I bet she won't get mad at me for sharing it. I asked her, she asked me not too long ago. She said, you, you lost some weight after the job of crown. I said, unfortunately, it would be as soon as I quit crown, I'll find it all back really quick. She said, I've lost, and I can't remember how many pounds she said over the course of her life. <laughs> She said she lost thousands of the course for a while. Um, it stuck with me. I thought we'd get back the other day. We laughed about it. But the thing about it is, you know, our change is temporary. What change that we can make in ourselves is temporary. The things that we can do for ourselves, it's all temporary. You can work really hard. You can stay at your job if your job permits and you have the have the capability. You can live at your job. Uh, 15, 16 hours a day, and all that overtime will make you have a better payday. But it's temporary. It's temporary. And if you can stand it for a whole year, well, I guess it's okay, but you're going to kill yourself in the process of trying to get what you want. Why would you even do that when you not make God first in your life and let God fill in the gap that you need? If you need more money, He'll fill in that gap. If you need taken care of better, God will take care of you. If you need whatever you need, God will make sure you have it. Now I said your needs. There's a difference between a need and a want. I want to be slimmer. I don't want to need to be slimmer. I, I, I think I do. But the fact of the matter is, there's a difference between a want and a need. God will take care of your needs. But you have to put God first. Now our church I want to see our church flourish in 2017. How, how do you see a church flourish? You put God first. How do you see our attendance go up? You put God first. How do you see you get more enjoyment out of your services? You put God first. No matter what you want in this world, you put God first. And then let God build on it from there. I don't know the changes that needs to take place in this church or the church down the road. I don't know any of that. All I know is what does set the word of God. All I know is what God gives me to preach. And when I do what he tells me to do, he'll take care of the things that I don't know. 2017. <laughs> My goal for it to be the best year ever for me. And I know how to do that. I want you to know how to do that. It's not through diet. It's not through working long hours. It's not through getting extra jobs for extra money. It's not through <clears throat> your relationships at home. It's through your relationship with Christ. You say, well, it's hard. And there ain't none of us sitting here that ain't have hard times at home. One time or the other. And it's hard when your home life is not where it needs to be. It's hard when the other part of you don't agree with you. It's hard. It makes problems. But at the end of the day, how much can you really fix it? How much can you really fix those things? But God can fix them. God can fix them. God can fix the problem, whether it's you and you just can't see it, or whether it's the other part of you and they can't see it. God can fix your problems this morning. You want to be a better person? You want to have a better life? Put God first. Verse number 34, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34 says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Quit worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. I pray that we all get to see a bunch more years, but we don't know that we'll make it to tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Today you have in front of you. God blessed you. He woke you up this morning. Worry about today. Worry about picking up your cross and following Him. 
In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, the Bible says, And he said unto them, and this is Jesus talking, And he said unto them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. Daily speaks volumes for me. You want to change your life in 2017? You want a better life? Then when you get up in the morning, each morning that God's blessed you to get up, you choose that day that you're going to follow Christ. You choose that day that you're going to deny yourself and you're going to follow Him. And you're going to put Him first in your life, whatever that means. When you sit down to that food before you reach out and grab a hold of it to eat, put Him first. Pray over it. Thank Him for it. When you get ready to get your payday, when you get ready to go out there in the bank or whatever you do, of course, most of them go drink and pop it down. Thank God for your blessings every day. Thank God for your children if you have children. Thank God for your mamas, your daddies. Thank God for your families. Thank God for your blessings. Your blessings is rich. And they all come from God. Thank God in 2017. Let's put him first. Now, if you want to call it a resolution, I'm not much on resolutions. Of my man. I had a resolution of that. But if I had a resolution for this church, for this coming year, I want each and every one of us to grow closer to Christ. Now, all of you may be old as you can be, and maybe you can't get no closer. I don't really believe that. But I'm just saying, I think everybody can move closer. But the fact of the matter is, I know I can move closer, and I want to move closer. I want to move closer to my God this year. I want to be what he wants me to be. When he says, hey, I want to say yes. I want to hear him that clearly. I want to know when he tries to send me to do something or when he tells me to stop doing something. I want to hear him clearly in this coming year. That's my New Year's resolution if I have such a thing. I want to serve God better. And if I serve God better, then he's going to bless me in mine. If you serve God better, He's going to bless your life richly. If you get closer to Him, He'll get closer to you. The Bible tells us that. We want more and more and more in this life. But we forget who gives it to us. And no matter what, if we was in the back of a dungeon and could only see light one time a day, chained to the bottom of a, a sail, if you have Christ as your Savior, you're still blessed. Because there'll come a day when this world's going to end and it's all going to go away. Go away. And you're going to stand before Him as either a Savior or a judge. I don't know about you this morning. But it may be 2017, maybe the year that Greg probably goes home. I don't know. If it is, I do the name of God. I want to stand in front of Him and Him of my redeemer. Not my judge. So this morning, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about all the resolutions that you may or may not have made thus far. <clears throat> I want you to remember if you really want all those things, if you really want to be better people, a better church, a better husband, a better wife, a better family, it all hinges on your relationship with Christ. Christ has to be first in your life. The more Christ you have in you, the more that it seeps out. And the more seeps out Christ in this old dark world, the better we're all going to be. That's how you make your better for 2017 this morning. Start with Christ, end with Christ. And everything is Christ. How do you stand this morning? Look, I, I don't know your souls in here. I, I, I don't know your hearts in here. I don't know where you're at in here with Christ. But what I can tell you about Christ this morning is that He loves you. I don't know what you've done or what you ain't. It's not my business. That's between you and Christ. But I can tell you this that God still loves you. I can tell you no matter where you're at in your walk. God loves you. He wants to keep you. He wants more than anything to see you get to heaven. 
If you don't know Christ as your Savior this morning, I can tell you that God wants you to be His. That God wants to forgive you of those sins. And God wants to lead you. This morning, where do you stand with Christ? Are you steadfast and sure? Is your relationship this morning as close to God as what it was in one time? Is your relationship with Him never been really close as it should be? Does it need to be closer? Well, I can tell you in here, no matter how close your relationship is with Him, it will never hurt to be a little closer. And you can never quit trying to be closer until you get home. When you step out on that double street one day, you can say, okay, I've done what I need to do. To the end, we need to push. You may be just as close as you can be with our Lord. How's your heart this morning? How's your soul? Is it ready to go? I hope so. I hope so. You and God know.
Thank God for her brother. Not the same for us. Thank God for her sister. Thank the same for us this morning. We want to thank God for each and every one of you. I want to take this time to thank God for all the people in this church that make this church run. Thank you. There's things that goes on in this church that most of us never know about. That this church just seems to run, and I've actually said that before. It actually seems to run because we have good people behind the scenes that don't take any credit, but they stand up and do the work. I thank God for those people. Thank God for the blessings that we have in this church. I love each and every one of you. You know, this Joseph, this was everybody has perfect attendance today, so starting out the year a good way. We'd love to see you all back. Come back as much as you can. Be with us as much as you can. Truly, let's put God first in our life. Just try. I will promise you that it'll be a blessing. I will promise you that you won't ever regret it. I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a great new year. Oh, Jim, we're just going to work right now. Well, the first thing is all of you.